Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Glad to have you aboard this morning as we get set to go over some little tidbits, I guess, left over from last night's hockey game. I mentioned it in the post game, but I want to take a little bit more of an expanded look at it here this morning, talking about kind of where the Oilers' needs are at. Despite winning 10 in a row, the Oilers desperately need to upgrade a few possessions. Just looking at how the last three, four, five ish games have gone. The last five games, the Oilers have averaged three goals per game. They've won all five. Fantastic. They're getting the goaltending, they're getting the defense, and they're getting the goal scoring from the forwards. But the issue is where that goal scoring is coming from, where that defense is coming from, and where that goaltending is coming from, kind of more or less in that direction. So, friends, Welcome aboard this stall on ATV. Love to have you hit that subscribe button here on the channel if you could. We just crossed less than 500 subscribers to go to 15,000. This morning sitting at 499 to that big 1.5. So, where do we go, friends? Well, the Oilers needs... Whoop, you got the sneak preview if you were able to catch that quick enough. The Oilers needs have kind of evolved from where they were at the start of the season where we needed a starting goaltender where we needed another number two defenseman, where we needed more depth scoring. Well, here's where we've got a couple of situations here for the Oilers that have changed, right? Uh, the Oilers desperately need a veteran backup goaltender, not a, not a third string like Calvin Card. I love Calvin Card. I love the fact that we have Ollie Rodriguez in the system as well. But the Oilers desperately need a veteran backup that would be able to offset a guy like Stuart Skinner faltering in game one or game two of the playoffs and kind of allow you a spot start that you can feel comfortable with. That is to say, I want you to look at me and right now and see I'm not blaming Calvin McCard for anything right here. He's been fantastic in what we've asked him to do. But just if we're not going to feel confident in Stuart Skinner, I don't think we can feel confident in Calvin McCard being the backup plan when it comes to the NHL playoffs. So that's where we go with that. Number two is a top four right-hand shot defenseman. To me, last night against the Montreal Canadiens, to me, this last three games on the road have really showed how much the Oilers need that Matthias Ekholm right-hand shot defenseman on this team. And obviously, Matthias Ekholm is a top pairing or second pairing defenseman on the Oilers given any night. And obviously, the jam he provides defensively, physically, and third the jam he provides offensively is very important for this Oilers squad. And not to blame Cody Ceci because out of everything Cody Ceci does, there's only one thing he does kind of poorly, and that's provide kind of that offensive jam. Yes, he's up to double digits and points and stuff, but he also can't have a top four defenseman going months on end without scoring goals. So that's where I'm saying an upgrade. And I, I think there's people that are to argue about his defense as well, especially if you could give a guy like Darnell Nurse, an even better partner than Cody Ceci. So look for that. That's kind of what I'm uh, evident looking at right now. And the last thing is two more bottom six forwards, one being a third line centerman. And simply, we know what the plan is here. From what it sounds like, it could very well be Dylan Holloway and Corey Perry. But as you saw those names on the list here a few moments ago, there's kind of some other options we could roll as well. So Let's go here, friends, and look at the options now for the Edmonton Oilers. And I think if you are looking for just a veteran backup, a guy who's been there, done that over the course of his career, it's going to be Jake Allen. Not necessarily saying that is who it's going to be 100%, but that would be my pick given the situation in Montreal. Uh, Corey Perry for that bottom six forward role seems all too very, uh, very likely. Uh, Dylan Holloway as well for that third line center role, at least for the time being, leading up until the trade deadline when the Oilers will have to make another decision at that point on if Dylan Holloway is going to be your third line center on the uh, bottom six for playoffs or if you go after somebody like Monaghan or Nick Bukestad. We've already talked about Monaghan this week, but again, I will repeat, Nick Bukestad I think has to and will always, as long as he's available to the Oilers cheap, remain an option. And then when it comes to the bottom or top 4D, you see here, we uh, we know that Patrick from the Oilers Fanatic and several other Oilers people have talked about Adam Boquist this week. And I think fair reason, I think he would be a good little add for the Oilers defense. 
Now, is he the solution over Cody Cece? Not sure. But obviously, if we're talking about him, he's got to be included in a list here. And I think if you go out and get Boquist, I think he would indeed play ahead of Vinny DeHarnay, given how the Oilers have chosen to deploy Vinny DeHarnay. And then another name there, especially if Detroit continues to meander and they want to get out from the contract, Jeff Petrie. I wonder if Jeff Petrie would be an option to the Oilers. Uh, here, obviously, a former Oiler, a guy who's been kind of all around it the past few years, kind of getting bounced around a little bit, and a guy that I would not mind seeing kind of stabilize the uh, top four, right? Jeff Petrie's playing 18 minutes and 26 seconds on the ice this season. He's played 33 games, had 13 points, so two goals, 11 assists, a little bit more than Cody CC Hasn't taken a ton of penalty minutes, has 5.0 shooting percentage, and really a plus four on that Detroit team as well. So a guy you could look to to kind of upgrade on Cody CC or side grade and just roll the dice on something a little bit different. So friends, I'm Tyson, this stall on the TV. Thank you so much for being aboard here this morning. Just some names to throw at you, some ideas that I have on a 10 game winning streak. I'm not saying fix what or fix what's not broken, but I'm saying there are some evident needs here for the Oilers. And kind of when it comes closer to that trade deadline, I'm hoping we're seeing at least one or two or three of those names listed on this Edmonton Oilers squad. I am up on, oh dear.